Hey, I'm Al from Dino Flash Videos. Thank you so much for coming by today and watching. Today we're going to be reviewing a 2018 Porsche McCann base model. Okay, now this is Porsche's most popular selling car. They've already sold in the four years since this car has been out more Porsche McCanns than all of the 911s ever since that car has been out. It's been out for decades, right? So this car is selling like hotcakes. Two out of every five Porsche cars that sell are McCann's. So we're going to delve into this and see why this car is selling so much. And I'm going to have a very critical eye as I review this car and, you know, tell you all the little things I don't like about this car. There's a lot of things not to like about this car. So let's get started. <laughs> One of the things about the base model is these puny little uh, brakes. Um, these are four piston calipers. Now, us Subaru guys from back in the day remember that um, you know this was something that would be good on you know a base WRX. It would upgrade it, you know, to the four piston, four pop brakes. You know, this is this is not this is a car that weighs you know probably like a thousand more pounds than a regular WRX. And here on the S model, this is the S model by comparison, it's got these much bigger calipers, six, one, two, three, six piston caliper and a much bigger ventilated rotor, much wider and bigger. Um, this one, by the way, has uh, 235, 55, 19 tires. And this one has 235, 60, 18. You know, you can see here, it looks like, you know, like some type of beast from the 70s you know with these giant you know huge wheel wells with the tiny little wheels you know in here on the s model with the 19 inch rims this looks like it fits so much better you know we'll get into talking about the s model and why i like the s model so much better in a later video right now in this video we're going to review this base mccann 2018 it's almost brand new it has a thousand miles on it the Macan base we're looking at now. Um, this is the uh, the base uh, base package is forty seven thousand eight hundred, um, which might be a good deal. Um, it's got a little two two liter motor, which is common to the Audi family. It's an Audi motor. It's not a uh, Porsche motor. It's the same motor you'll find in most any Audi like the A4, the Q5, um, you know, the whole the whole range of Audis. Um, you know, you'll see as we take it out for a ride, it, in my opinion, it's working a little hard to push this 4,100 pound S, you know, SUV crossover vehicle. Um, this car does have some minor options, you know, like any Porsche vehicle, right? The thing about these Porsche vehicles is that, you know, we do have, um, uh, the ability to check off a lot of option boxes and really change the configuration of the vehicle as you can see here I'm going over the interior. There's this dashboard is like really cheap plastic Down here very cheap plastic the seats they have like cheap leatherette, you know imitation with Alcantara fabric um, The door cards are all plastic um, Yeah, you get the Porsche uh, you know badge on the hood and you get the nice steering wheel that's a really nice steering wheel it looks kind of like out of a 918 spider um, and the car has some really good vehicle dynamics as far as you know compared to other crossover uh, vehicles in the market but you know reality is that uh, uh, you know for you know almost fifty thousand dollars you know, you're you're looking at a car that's very expensive and kind of cheap inside. You know, for my opinion, um, you know, a lot of people rave about this car. They're crazy about it. I'm going to talk about some of the things that are not so great about it, and also some of the things that are really good about it. Um, you know, I just bought one for my daughter, so you know, obviously, you know, I'm not like totally against them. I do think there's some merit to this car. Um, let's talk about some of the options of this car. Um, you know, 
some of them are ridiculous. Well, the color, first of all, they're charging you seven hundred dollars because you wanted it in blue metallic. Um, the heated steering wheel is two hundred sixty dollars. I think that's a good option. The Pemerac roof, which is really nice, that's sixteen hundred dollars. Um, lane change assist, that's like a blind spot monitor. You know what? I think it's ridiculous that Porsche is charging even for that because most even Hyundai's, you know, will include that. Uh, Porsche Connect, that's like Apple CarPlay and stuff like that, um, $1,000. And then the premium package, which is a lot of stuff, you know, basically you should get anyway, like the, some dynamic lighting system, which is just nonsense. Auto dimming mirrors, like big de whoop, whoop de do on that. And heated seating and uh, Bose surround. So I guess you're getting Bose surround and heated seating for 2500 So this basically all comes down to about almost nine grand. It bumps the sticker price up to fifty-six grand. So um, my proposition to you is going to be, um, you know, as we get into this review uh, in more depth, it's going to be: Is it better to buy this vehicle brand new for fifty-six thousand in this stripped-down, you know, condition, or is it better to buy, you know, like a two-year-old or three-year-old McCann with a higher trim level and more options, CPO? with low mileage, you know, and get yourself into a car with a lot more options, you know. Um, you know, if, if the thing with Porsche is once you start checking those option boxes, the cars get really expensive. So, you know, you can get yourself into a seventy, eighty thousand $80,000 truck, um, you know, but if you were to go out and buy the seventy, eighty thousand $80,000 truck, it's going to depreciate, you know, twenty five or $30,000 in the first couple of years. So is it better to uh, buy the car CPO certified pre-owned from the Porsche dealer and get an extended warranty you know so you'll be getting basically the same warranty like for instance the vehicle I just got um, the warranty on this car is four years or 50,000 miles um, and the CPO vehicle that I got was um, uh, four years or a hundred thousand miles now the vehicle had 18,000 miles on the clock so that's like 82,000 miles so it's a lot more mileage and it's the same duration of time it's just the issue you know do you want a car that's brand new you know you know with plastic inside you know and no options with a little four banger or do you want a car with a you know six cylinder twin turbo with a little more oomph to it and uh, you know you're not ringing out a four-cylinder all the time a little bit better brakes and some more options and you're spending the same money but you get more bang for your buck and most of the depreciation is already out of the car that's kind of like a question that you got to decide but for today I'm gonna review this car right and I'm gonna give you my impressions about the pros and the cons about the car I've already talked about some of them the interior being so cheap another one um, you know again I'm not trying to be overly negative about the car um, I'm not such a big fan of this infotainment package system over here okay maybe I need some more time to figure it out I mean it's got a great sound set so I don't want to play too much of that song and give me a copyright violation of my YouTube channel um, I'm not such a big fan of this it's not as intuitive as as, as, as former years I do need some more training with this um, this is is you know a lot of people like it all these buttons I think it's ridiculous um, you know it's somewhat uh, logical once you figure out where all the everything is a lot of people talk about that in their reviews um, you know obviously there's a lot of missing switches here for a lot of stuff that you could have had that this card doesn't have but there's a lot of things here even on the base car there's a lot of buttons and switches and stuff so um, and then there's a whole bunch of stuff up here too a lot of buttons up here so you know you almost find feel like you're flying you know a Concorde jet you know or some type of plane that you need to do like a pre um, drive checklist before you before you head off um, you know I think this is outdated this is this is uh, you know this is very like five years ago you know this is this is uh, you know this is not uh, 2018 you know they're coming out with the 2019 versions of these cars by the way the, the motor remains the same in this car there's a few changes to the car um, they're coming out with a few little d 
details that they're changing uh, minor stuff a couple little suspension tweaks uh, they're changing the tires a little bit and uh, again a cheap uh, cheap dashboard um, I mean glove box cheap glove box very very cheap um, so let me let me talk about a couple of things about this car um, I'm a big guy I'm six foot three first of all there's less room in here than my 911 right so I'm like my feet are up against it here and up against it here I can't stretch my legs out all the way my legs are in a bent position um, I'm pretty tight uh, as far as headroom goes uh, this is supposed to be a crossover vehicle I have about the same headroom in the front as in my um, 911 now let's go in the back seat and just take a look um, it's a good day for testing uh, crossover vehicles because it's raining out See here, you can see where the seat is in the position that I'm up, that I'm sitting. For me, there's no way that I can even get in the car seat. Absolutely no way. Now you can see when I'm sitting in the back of this car. Like again, I'm I'm six foot three, so so my head is touching the roof, and I can't get my legs in the back whatsoever. And the other seat, you can see, there's just no way you can get your. It's just impossible. It does have nice uh, controls in the back for climate control, but the bottom line is if you have normal sized people in the front, you can forget about sitting anyone in the back. So in that way, but you do have nice, uh, you know, review for the moonroof in the back. That's pretty cool. But um, not a lot of room in the back, unfortunately. Let's take a quick you know, look around the outside of the car. You know, the 18 inch wheels, they, they, they have a lot of, uh, rubber around them and uh, a gap between the, the fender well not the sexiest looking um, you know, just a base car one interesting thing about this car that a lot of people don't know is that the hood goes all the way to here it's almost like kind of like a racing car it's one piece of a loom the entire hood it's got these giant cutouts for the um, for the, for the uh, headlights okay so we can open that up and uh, check that out check out the little beauty motor you know this is the same kind of motor that would power something like a uh, like a like in the old days like a like a Mitsubishi evolution you know two liter two liter um, four cylinder so think about all the abuses you're gonna get with a little chick like me driving. So here you go, you got your uh, you got your big aluminum hood covering up. I guess it'd be really easy to work on this car, you know. If you're a mechanic, there's lots of space around it. So that's it, that's the walk around. So um, what is it about this car that makes it so exciting? Well, number one, the, 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 the coolest thing about this car that really sets it off from all the other you know, competitors in the marketplace is this transmission, the PDK transmission. It was a really ingenious um, conception to put a PDK transmission in the car because it makes the shifting, um, you know, even on this base Macan, it makes the shifting and the you know the the interaction between the driver and the vehicle really tremendous uh and i think it improves with the fuel economy this but a lot of that is due to the fact that it's really a manual transmission that's shifting automatically with the dual clutch pdk um it works just like it does in any other porsche one pet peeve that i have that i'll show you later it does have this fantastic steering wheel um again i may be a little critical all right I'm, I'm not your average YouTube reviewer. It's just going to blow smoke up every Porsche vehicle and just be like, wow, you know, it says Porsche is so good. I'm going to give you, you know, the reality here. Okay, so one of the things that really sucks, I'm going to show you later on, is that it does have these great, uh, you know, paddle shifters that are really just phenomenal. I'm going to show you a little bit about, you know, they're, they're, they're metal. They're, they're really serious. They're the real deal. They give you the feel. They're just there for aesthetics, you know. They really, they, they don't serve any useful function. I mean, maybe if you were descending a mountain pass, if you weren't using this mountain uh, descent mode that, that's like a cruise control for going down a hill. Um, I have a hard time zooming in on that. Um, 
if you weren't using that mode if you want to shift manually that's great but as far as performance driving if you try to hold out your your shifts um, and um, uh, shift manually you're gonna have a problem because uh, if you try to do that with this car unlike the 911 um, with the P with the with the PDK with this car it will shift for you before you reach the um, before you before you shift manually it's gonna shift for you so you're really not having a manual shift so that's kind of like annoying right so what's the point of having these paddle shifters if you can't shift it when you want to shift it right the rev limiter over there is like 6800 rpm on the rev limiter and you know if I want to hold it out to 6800 and shift it manually you know and have some fun you know at a red light forget about it it's just not happening because it's gonna shift way before and it's just really annoying you know um, another thing about this car is um, you know the brake pedal I'm down there the brake pedal look how far that thing moves right up, up there it moves all the way down it's spongy it's this is very you know what if you're coming from like a, a Chevy Equinox you know or you know I can't think of any crossovers that are really out there in the market but I'm really not a crossover fan or maybe a Subaru Crosstrek or I, I don't I don't know what kind of crossovers there are you know what maybe you know you're not used to a Porsche vehicle so you know this type of a situation with a brake pedal that's so spongy and the brakes that suck so bad you know if you tried to take this this Porsche to a racetrack the the brakes would be boiling in no, no time um, you know if you want to drive fast you need good brakes this car has four piston calipers in the front and they're tiny little uh, rotors and calipers and the brakes suck and the brake pedals mushy so the brakes are not very un Porsche like uh, it's a weak spot in the car also the steering is the electric um, electric uh, assisted uh, rack um, it's a little soft on this car although the steering and handling dynamics are really good on the car um, you know if you compare it if you're expecting a 911 type experience if you're coming from a 911 or a Panamera or you know if that's what you're looking for it's not going to drive quite like that it's 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 really different um, um, you know so with that said you know I'm, I'm bringing up a lot of negative points about this car but um, it is a fantastic crossover vehicle. I mean, I, I just did buy one for myself. So am I is psychotic or irrational for buying one of these cars if there's so many bad points? No, I'm not. There's a lot of good points about the car. It has a lot of utility. There's a lot of practicality to the car. It's a very safe car. Um, it's a very good car. There's a lot of precision to it. It makes a lot of sense uh, if you buy the right one, um, which we'll get into more later. Um, but, um, you know, I just want to be clear that it's not like you're buying it and you're having a Porsche experience you know you really you're not it's it's you know it's an entry-level Porsche yes that you can get up you can get it for forty eight thousand dollars yes but you know is this the type of experience this cheap plastic you know that you would expect you know in your entry-level Porsche of old days no that's not what you'd expect so you know they've, they've cut some corners here and uh, you get what you pay for so uh, with that with that with that uh, introduction let's take this car on the road and um, you know see how it rides and uh, you know see how the little four bangers up for motivating this heavy uh, beast down the road of course I'm out here in the rain today. It's a great day to test a crossover. Rain sensing wiper stock. That's nice. You know what? For a brand new car, um, it's it's a little uh, jaggedy, the wipers. Um, but let's turn them off for a minute and just enjoy how quiet this car is. Um, it's a really a quiet car uh, for a stock car. Um, if you drive it normally, like a civilized human being, which I seem to have a hard time driving any car civilized, it's really quiet okay so that's really cool okay so so let's get into some driving impressions all right um, if you're just cruising around gently I don't think you really notice the four banger motor what are my impressions of the steering well you know I have other Porsche vehicles so you know of course this feels a little numb to me maybe that's because it has uh, all-season 
you know, tires, you know, um, I believe it uses the Michelin Latitude tire, which is not really a great rated tire. If you look on TireRack.com, it's it's actually has pretty poor reviews, so it's not really a great tire. Um, the brakes are definitely spongy. Um, you know, by any stretch of imagination, you know this is this is not you know Porsche like in its feel for the brakes. But you know, if you compare it to other crossovers or utility vehicles of its size. Um, it's it feels good. I mean, it's well balanced. Here I am coming around some corners. It's a very bumpy road. Um, this car does ride a little harsh. It's got the stock suspension. It's a very bumpy road. Um, um, it's it, it handles really good for what it is. You know, it's kind of it's kind of like defying the laws of physics. You know, the the the, the handling is is decent. You know, that's how I would describe it. Um, is it is it uh, world class? Uh, no, I, w I would not describe it as world class. But uh, for a crossover, I guess it's, it's good, you know. And the transmission is where it's at, you know. So we'll get on it. We'll get on it a little bit in a minute. But let's just try some, you know, we'll try some corners here in the rain. We'll enjoy the PDK transmission a little bit here. So we're going around some corners, you know, and we're holding up the gear. Now that's when the four cylinders really start to feel, you know, overworked a little bit. In my impression, when I'm starting to get on it, you know, I can feel that motor really working. You know, even you know at these slow speeds, I mean, it's really just working its tail off. Um, I mean, I don't know, four banger in a 4,100 pound car. I'm not feeling it. It doesn't make any sense to me, but. Um, by the way, one more thing that's really stupid um, in this car, it has launch control, right? Which I guess you could shave off like, it does like 0 to 60 in 6.3 seconds if you put it on sport mode, sport mode. Now, I bet you know this car has such underpowered that even in the rain, if you do a launch control, it's not even gonna spin the tires, okay? So we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna do a launch control right here so I've got it in sport mode I'm gonna floor it so I'm in sport mode I got my foot on the brake flooring it 4,000 rpm dropping the brake no spinning tires I'm off I'm already at 60 miles an hour just like that so it accelerates no no spinning of tires at all in the rain it's like a non-event um, you know what I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, the launch control on this car is just so stupid. Um, I just think you're abusing the car, and um, unnecessarily. And you're you're. Uh, so here I am. I got it totally floored. You know, winding out that four-cylinder motor, just abusing the hell out of it. And, um, you know, the transmission. Let me tell you something. The transmission is the star of this car. Um, um, the PDK transmission is just as good in this car as it is in any other Porsche vehicle. Um, this is what makes this crossover vehicle is the PDK transmission. Um, the suspension is good. Um, it handles really well. Um, the way they have the car designed is excellent um, as far as the, the handling of the, of the crossover. For what it is um, but the transmission is what really sets this vehicle apart compared to other vehicles that have like an automatic transmission this this PDK transmission is is phenomenal but I'm going to show you in a minute here um, what happens when you try to put it in manual mode okay and um, it's kind of disappointing on this particular version so I guess you know I guess they just want to protect their motors against morons um, you know, blowing up their motors, you know, over revving the motors, whatever, you know, but listen, manual means manual, right? So, I mean, this is not a car you want to take the line. And we have very little body roll. The car is holding this corner tremendously. It's nice, you know, it's fun. I would say that it's fun to drive, you know. Um, now that little whap, 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 whap sound, that's your, um, Lane departure, you know, warning. It, I guess it's it's telling you when if you don't have your turn signal and you're 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 drifting out of a lane. But well, here we are. Look, I'm I'm doing 65 and I'm flooring it. 
and this little four cylinder is just working its ass off, you know. Yeah, it's moving, it gets up there, but it just feels like once you get over 60, it's just like really, you know, if you're if you're trying to move aggressively, it's just really, it's really working hard, the, the, the little motor, you know. It wouldn't be my first choice, this motor. Um, and I'm about to tell you what, the way I drive, with my characteristics of driving, um, I, I feel like, um, you know, I feel that, uh, that I, 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 I wouldn't get good gas mileage with this car because you know, I'd be constantly, you know, in the gas the whole time. And then um, I would probably uh, get very poor gas mileage with this car. So I'm not a huge fan of the base model at all. I don't like it um, because uh, the engine is uh, not even a Porsche engine. Uh, it's an Audi motor, um, number one. Number two, um, it's very cheap inside. You don't even have leather on the seats. you got plastic everywhere. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think the, the Macan S, you know, is a vehicle that appeals to me more. You know, and I like some of the other options, um, which we'll talk about. You know more but anyway let's put this car in, in manual mode now okay so we're in manual mode okay so we're in manual mode and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it on first gear I'm gonna try to shift it from first I don't know if this GoPro is picking up I'm gonna try to shift it right around 6500 okay but it already shifted for me before I can even shift look I haven't done any shifting yet it's just shifting it so there you go I tried to I tried to uh, I tried to put it in manual mode I'm in manual mode and I'm trying to shift it and before I can even get to the part where I want to do my shifting it's shifting for me but yeah it's shifting fast uh, it's shifting phenomenally but uh, there's no other uh, crossover vehicle on the market that's got a transmission like this but it'd be nice to have that manual control right let's get on it again look Doing 65, 70, 75, 80. That, I'm going downhill. The little four cylinder is just working its ass off. Now I'm on the brakes. Mushy. You know. Um, it really just, you know, you're getting on the brakes. It's just, it's just mushy brakes. Nothing like any Porsche vehicle that I've ever been in, other than this one, you know. If you were to if you were to take this car on a road racing course, um, this particular car right here, uh, and try to drive aggressively, or even try to aggress drive aggressively on the street, you would just literally melt the brakes like totally. The brakes would just be boiling. But I guess that's not what this car is designed to do. You know, the car is designed for what it is. I mean, I'm out here on a rainy day, slippery roads. The the, the, the Michelin uh, Latitude tires are doing their job. I mean, you can't even spin the tires. I'm not losing traction. I have great traction. You know, you have like an elevated seating position. You're up higher in the air. Um, you you uh, are able to carry some stuff in the back. Although, as we saw, there's no leg room whatsoever for anybody with a big guy like me in the car. I have less room in the car, like shoulder space-wise and, and feet-wise and headroom wise than in my 911 turbo which doesn't make any sense to me at all that's no that makes no sense at all i don't understand that but you know go figure um so you know i think it's a great crossover it's i think it's i think it's nice it gives you that entry point um has a great backup camera by the way so let me just tell you a couple like little little things you know a couple little things else that i didn't really you know i don't really care for about this car is uh you know small details but when you're spending this kind of money on a porsche uh vehicle you know you want to you know you you're spending a lot of money right so um you know what are you getting for your fifty thousand dollars here you know um this is the this is the, the steering wheel control. I mean, it's it's manual, right? 
this is not what you expect in a vehicle of this of this of this uh of this price point you know as far as i'm concerned um you know i want some type of electric adjustment you know down here to control the steering wheel you know that's a small point but hey you know you're getting you get what you pay for by the way it does have this uh you know multi-function gauge you know engine oil i always like to watch that you know whenever whatever cars i have i always like to watch this you know to make sure the engine's warm before i start beating on it i'm uh, i never like to abuse a cold car and this tells me the radio station i'm listening to um this of course has xm radio which is cool um that shows me the status of my phone and all my phone menus and even although uh, this is my trip um, and it shows you here that even although you're rated at uh, <laughs> you're rated by the EPA at a combined 23 miles per gallon you know 20 in the city and 23 in the highway it's actually as I predicted getting 18.6 miles per gallon over the last 900 miles as I predicted you know no no small surprise there right um no surprise right it's a little tiny four banger moving a huge motor you're going to be in that gas pedal a lot right and tire pressure indicator you know everything's good there and the torque split that shows you how much traction is going to the front and rear tire and then back to the same gauge interestingly even although all you know all of the porsche McCann uh, vehicles are uh, turbocharged. You know, they only call one of them the turbo. So, um, the uh, the base is a four-cylinder turbo. You know, kind of like, it reminds me of the Evo 8 back in the day. Um, you know, inline four-cylinder turbo, which is kind of like classic uh, turbocharged uh, engine. It's a turbo, right? But you don't get a boost gauge. I don't know why. You know, you're spending uh, $50,000. I mean, how hard would it be to put a boost gauge up there? It's a turbo. And then the McCann S, which is the one I just bought, is a twin turbo. Um, in 2019, they're going back to a single turbo. We'll get into more of that later on. Um, and um, it, uh, you know, unfortunately... <laughs> Um, is not called the turbo it's called the McCann s and even though it's a twin turbo twin intercooled you know motor which is really you know just like any other porsche turbo they don't call it a turbo you get no boost gauge and the gts is a, is also a three liter um you know twin turbo twin intercooled uh vehicle you don't get a boost gauge um you know only when you buy the turbo and spend a crazy amount of money uh, when you go up to a 3.6 liter and get 400 horsepower so you get 60 extra horsepower that's when you get a boost gauge in your in your McCann um, well that's my review of the 2018 McCann base um, all in all um, I think it's a great utility crossover um, the McCann I personally would not recommend buying the base um, and I'll review uh, in a coming video the McCann um, S um, that I purchased I would advise you if you're considering to get a McCann um, if you're in the ballpark for a base uh, price point around $50,000 um, you know, and I think, by the way, just to give you my own personal opinion, there's people who are buying base. They call some of these the sport package base, um, the sport model base, um, sport package on a base, right? That that goes for like sixty something thousand dollars. Um, that has a lot of options on it that you don't need, like a sport exhaust sound, um, all kinds of stupid stuff, and then. Um, it's like a sport package so um then you still got your four-cylinder motor and you're spending you know s money and and you're getting a car that's still got that four-cylinder motor you know that just makes no sense to me um you know if you're one of those people that absolutely has to have a brand new car you have to have brand brand new car by all means you know you know if that's all you can afford get it but I think it makes a lot more sense to um, you know let somebody else take the depreciation of the first year or two, pick up like a two-year-old or one-year-old, 
McCann S with a few mileage on it. When they tack on the CPO from the Porsche dealer on top of that, you're going to get a warranty that's going to last you for like five or six years, which is much longer than the factory. And then you're going to have a car with a lot more options. It's a lot more comfortable. It's a lot more enjoyable. It's a lot more Porsche-like um, than this base model. And it has a really Porsche motor, a twin-turbo V6, than this little four-cylinder Audi motor. And I think the motor, you know, the engine in a car really makes the car, you know. I kind of like, you know, I want to I wanna compare this uh, McCann base model i kind of want to go back to um you know the beginning days of the 911 when it first came out and they ordered offered it with a four-cylinder motor it was very similar to what you get in a volkswagen beetle um you know of course a little bit different right but the concept was is uh, that was called the 912 right um you know there was a very underpowered 911 you know, a lot of people now want those cars. They're very rare. They're desirable. But hey, who wants a four-cylinder 911, right? I mean, I mean, maybe for a car collector, that would be cool. But for driving around every day, who would want that? You want a six-cylinder 911, right? I mean, that's, to me, that's what Porsche is all about. It's partly the motor, right? The wonderful thing about a Porsche is the motor. So I don't know. So I'm feeling the same way about this base Macan that the the four-cylinder motor is just not doing it any justice. It's working too hard, and it's underpowered, and you need more uh, bang for your buck. Uh, also, the Macan S comes with larger uh, brakes. It comes with uh, six-pot um, brakes in the front, a little bit larger. Gives you a little bit better braking experience. Now, it's not anything like a 911. It's not going to give you the braking experience you're used to, but it's still superior you know, to the experience you're getting in this base Macan, which is really sub subpar braking. If you're, you know, if you're comparing it to a Ford, you know, crossover or a Subaru, yeah, these brakes are decent. They're not like a Porsche. Okay, so so you know, this car here for me is is all about the point that yeah, I got a Porsche. I'm driving a Porsche, and. Um, you know it's the badge and and you got some Porsche experience that you're feeling but you know the the interior is really weak um, you know the materials are really um, very very bad inside the car and it's very cheap feeling and the brakes are not too good and it's just you know you're missing a lot um, the only way that I would Personally, for myself, the only way that I would buy a base Macan uh, car new or consider one would be to get the absolute base model, right? If I was going to buy one, I would just buy the base one for $48,000 because then you'd be buying like a bargain basement car brand new for $48,000. That's the only way it makes any sense to me at all. And then you have something that's at least decent to drive around in and you'd be getting a bargain. Once you, with Porsche, every time, you know, you click off any option, it's just you're ringing the register you're running yourself up into a much higher price point the options are ridiculously priced um, we're going to get into that more when i discuss the macan s that i bought um, you know it went to be a seventy-five thousand dollar vehicle with just a few options it's ridiculous the way porsche gets you out of options um, you could get a ninety thousand dollar macan with no problem um, and then you know basically you're not going to get any of that money back when you go to sell it in a few years um you know it's, it's just makes no sense so um the best way to buy these cars is to buy them a couple years old that's my my recommendation or to buy if you're going to buy this four-cylinder unit get the base 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 model don't put a lot of options on this car because um, you're just not getting the value in my opinion anyway thank you for watching um hope you enjoyed this um for all my enthusiast friends you know who are into like super high performance cars we're going to be getting back into that you know we're, we're 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 trying to diversify the channel and cover some other subjects and um some people are interested in these type of vehicles and i'm interested in them too so we're making a video you know covering the macan and i hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching 
And if you have any questions about the Macan, be sure to post them below and have a great day.